It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Welcome to Science Bowl, everybody. Today, we have an outstanding set of teams from two outstanding middle schools playing our game, hoping to become the last of our three semifinalists in this year's competition. Of course, everything is different this year because of the pandemic. Everyone is in their homes or in the studio. We're all safe and sound, and we're going to make this Science Bowl competitive just as we do when we have students right here in our beautiful studio here in Landover. Let's meet today's teams first. From Hyattsville Middle School, we should say hello to Desmond. Desmond waved everybody out there if you would. Nice to have you here. We welcome Paula. Paula, these are all seventh graders. Hey, Paula. And Haley waved everybody. Haley, another seventh grader from Hyattsville. And if you're a fan of the show, if you've seen it before, you know that we have questions in six different categories. Here are those categories. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green Things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body Systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's Get Physical, questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's Science Potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions, everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. Here on Science Bowl, we start our teams out with 50 points. No penalties ever for incorrect answers. At the end of the game today, each team will have nine separate questions in two separate rounds. So not to confuse you, but 18 questions per team, and the team that has the highest score at the end will come back to play another team and perhaps advance to become that third semifinalist. So if you guys are ready, let's begin. All right, our first category is green things. I'm going to give you a five point relatively easy question, a 15 point question, and a 25 point question. A five, a 15, and a 25 in green. Here we go. Green things for five points. The knockout variety of this flower, which is America's national flower, is so called because it blooms all season. Question, what is America's national flower? Talk among yourselves. Throw out some answers. OK, guys, um, what do you think? I'm thinking sunflower. Me too. Um, Maryland's is a black-eyed Susan, I think. So sunflower. To, to it, I think it's sunflower. Sunflower is a good try. Yes, sunflower. Yeah, sunflower. And, uh, and Paula, uh, I like that you knew that a Maryland's national flower, state flower, was the black-eyed Susan. It is the rose, the American beauty rose. And if you look around your neighbors, they may have the knockout roses. They're everywhere. They bloom all season, unlike some roses that just bloom once and then die out. All right, here's your 15-point question in green things. It's a multiple choice. When a tree or a shrub like a crepe myrtle, some of you may have one of those in your backyard, when a tree or a shrub exfoliates, and parse that word, exfoliates, does it mean that the tree or the shrub loses its leaves, sheds its bark, or flowers for a second time? Loses its leaves, sheds its bark, or flowers for a second time if it exfoliates? Talk among yourselves. What do you think? What does that sound like? Hey, Paula, what do you guys think? Desmond, you'll need to talk up a little bit louder, young man, because I can't hear what you're saying. Oh, Haley, Paula, what do you guys think? I think it's, um, or like that, um, Well, you know, if the word, if the question were defoliates, de means to take away, foliates means leaves. That means the tree would shed its leaves. 
but exfoliates means also to take away. This is when a tree sheds its bark, and you may notice those crepe myrtles, those pink and purple and red flowered trees that we see around here, and the bark peels off. That helps to keep away parasites. All right, we have a visual question for you for your last question in Green Things, a 25-pointer. Look at the picture if you would. You know, when trees show patches of this stuff called lichens, a lot of gardeners, they panic. They think it's a parasite. They want to spray it. But gardeners will find out that it really doesn't do any harm. They spray it anyhow. They spray it with copper sulfate, which doesn't harm the algae part of the lichen, but it does kill off the partner to the algae that lichen is. So my question to you is a lichen, L-I-C-H-E-N, is a combination of two different organisms, an algae and a what? Symbiotically, they work together to keep that lichen alive, if you've ever heard of a lichen before. You might see it on the trees because of the summer we've had. It's a fungus. It's an algae and a fungus come together. We use that question a lot on Science Bowl. Maybe you've heard it before. Here's your zoo parade questions for five points. When the female lays this flightless bird's signature green eggs and the male sits on them, incubates them, hatches them, and raises them, both sexes, the males and the females, probably are starring in those commercials for a car insurance company. What bird do you see on TV that is a star of a car insurance company? A flightless bird. The male lays the eggs, they're green. He does all the heavy work, mom is gone. It's an emu. Have you seen that one? Lemu, emu. That strange bird that's riding in a car with a guy. All right, 15 points in zoo. Some of you have seen flocks of Canada geese. They live around here. Some of them don't even migrate anymore. They like it around here. They like to live in golf courses. If you see a feeding flock of Canada geese, they're all feeding. They all have their head down. They're all chomping away at the grass. But one bird, one bird is not eating. It's always looking around. It's looking for danger. It's looking for the dog that you're walking. It's looking for a cat. That bird, it's on duty, has what S initialed name, just like a soldier that's on duty, watching for enemies. S initialed. Is, it, or is he looking out for the predator? Yes. He's looking out for the predators. Soldier is a sentry or a sentinel. A sentry or a sentinel. All right, try the 25-point question. 25-point question in Zupri. I think you'll get this one. The most fertile invertebrate in the world is called the crown of thorns. It is an echinoderm that is decimating, ruining the corals in Australia's Great Barrier Reef. This creature is probably best known as SpongeBob SquarePants' sidekick. Have you ever seen SpongeBob SquarePants? Yes. What creature is his pal, his sidekick, that is always getting into trouble with SpongeBob? Patrick or the starfish? That's it. It's the starfish. Yeah, the crown of thorns starfish is what we're looking for there. Thank you, Paula. All right, three more questions before we take our first break. Here's your body systems question in five, for five points. Long time ago in the 1600s and 1700s, body snatchers would go into graveyards at night. This is like something out of Halloween. To dig up the bodies, take them to doctors and hospitals when no one was looking so the doctors could dissect them cut them open to understand more about how the human body was put together. What A initial branch of science was being used here with those bodies? Trying to find out how a body is put together. What A initial science is that? Doctors in medical school get a cadaver, a dead body oftentimes. They open it up in what A initial class? Guys, what do you think? Hmm. 
That's the an anatomy. Ana have you heard the word anatomy before? The anatomy is the arrangement of our body. The physiology is the way that it works. All right, try this next one. This is a 15-point question. If your gallbladder is removed, and I hope you don't lose your gallbladder. It's not fatal if you do. But if your gallbladder is removed, the substance normally stored there but produced in the liver uh, passes now directly from the liver to the small intestine. What juice is in your gallbladder that's actually made in your liver? Helps you to digest fats. Some of you may have had relatives that have lost their, gall, their gallbladder and they have to change their diet. They have to watch the kinds of fats they eat. Do you know the name of that juice? Acid? Because you think it's acid? Yeah, I can't hear you, Desmond. Say something again. Guys think it's acid. You're breaking up again. Say it again for me, please. Acid. Not, it is, it's not acid. That's a good try. It's called bile juice. Bile juice. B-I-L-E. All right. Last question for you in this first run is a multiple choice. Ragweed. If you're an allergy sufferer like I am, you know ragweed is everywhere. It causes your eyes to drip and your nose to run. It's miserable. Uh, it produces over a billion pollen grains a year. No wonder it's bad. But it also has some medical value because they can use it to make a kind of chemical called an emetic. E-M-E-T-I-C. An emetic. Does an emetic stop diarrhea? Does it make you throw up or does it lower your fever? If your mother or your dad or your grandmother gives you an emetic, it's a medicine, E-M-E-T-I-C. You me remember this time because you might need it. Does it help to stop diarrhea? Does it make you throw up or does it lower your fever? Throw up. Lower your fever. Haley says throow up. Wait, wait, Paula, wait. you want to weigh in? Okay, it's either... Desmond, you choose. Diarrhea. But We're going to take Haley's see. answer because it's correct. Nicely done, Haley. It does make you throw up. And sometimes if you've swallowed something that you shouldn't, you take an emetic to get your body to get rid of it, uh, oftentimes uh, helping to save people's lives. Okay, Hyesville, that means you end this first round of play with 100 points. It is now time to meet the team from Walker Mill Middle School and like Hyattsville has a history of winning county championships here on the Science Bowl. And today we welcome Ijama, who is a captain, the captain of the team today. Tiffany is here today. And also we have uh, Io, who is representing the school. And uh, I know you guys are going to do really well. Okay, we have three questions for you from the category green things. Here's your five point question. This grain, arguably the most eaten by people around the world, is grown from seedlings in wet patties that are placed exactly eight inches apart. Um, guys, I'm thinking rice. What do you guys think? Rice or wheat? Ben. I think rice or wheat. Yeah, it is rice. Boy, that's a way to start the game, Ijama. Perfect answer. All right. Next. The red pigment that you see in fall leaves, the deciduous trees that normally shed their leaves, a lot of them are red in the fall. There's a pigment called anthocyanin that makes it so. Anthocyanin, believe it or not, has SPF properties, meaning it prevents the leaves from getting what? Um, I'm thinking like maybe frozen or prevents the leaves from like I don't know. What do you guys think? Hmm. I say possibly SPF is the clue there. If you know what SPF stands for, it might help you. What were you saying, Tiffany? I think it, hey, it's, it protects it from probably getting wet or something like that. Getting yeah. wet? What are you thinking? Okay. And freezing? What are you thinking? I'm thinking what you said about frozen seems possible. What was that? Nice. Talk nice and loud so you're talking to people in the next room. Go ahead. What you said about it might being frozen sounds possible. Frozen sounds possible. Remember, the leaves are, they're dying. The chlorophyll is dead now, and all the beautiful colors are coming out. But you know, they can still photosynthesize a bit. 
anthocyanin, actually SPF means sun protective factor, it keeps them from getting sunburned, if you can believe that. It adds a few more weeks of time to photosynthesize. Try this one. All right, uh, this is a multiple choice question. On the island of New Guinea, which is a place where there are so many different kinds of plants, the most diverse plant population anywhere on Earth, most of the plants are called epiphytes, E-P-I-P-H-Y-T-E-S, epiphytes. There are clues in that name. Does that mean that these plants on New Guinea are mostly pollinated by the wind, plants that can grow in salt water, or plants that grow on other plants? Um, well, I'm thinking plants that grow on salt water or pollinated by the wind. What are you guys thinking? I think the same thing. You're all supporting your captain here. Actually, it is the last one. It's plants that grow on other plants. Some of you know that there are plants called orchids, beautiful flowers. They have roots that hang in the air. Epiphytes have roots that hang in the air because it's so moist in those jungles over there. The roots don't have to go into the, into the ground. Let's try the zoo parade question for five points. You all know what metamorphosis is when an insect goes through different stages from an egg to an adult. You might say that what stage of metamorphosis is the baby buggy? The baby buggy is what stage in metamorphosis? I'd say caterpillar. Caterpillar. Guys? Is that what you guys think? Caterpillar larvae? We're taking that. That's exactly right. Your captain, she knows what she's talking about. The baby buggy is the larva or the caterpillar. Well done, Najama. Here, uh, a visual question for Zoo Parade in 15. Look at this, if you would. These creatures are probably not familiar to you. They're, they're a kind of hedgehog called Tenrex. They live in Madagascar. You know, like the old woman who lived in a shoe, this mother Tenrex has so many babies, she hardly knows what to do. Sometimes over 30 in a single what? What do we call a group that has just been born? The same word that describes a group of newborn puppies. Litter. A litter. That's it. You got it. Perfect. A litter of baby Tenrex or a litter of puppies. Absolutely right. Good answer. Last question for you, 25 in Zoo Parade. Locusts are normally solitary insects. They don't bother anybody else, not even other locusts. But then something happens. They start producing some kind of P-initial chemical that makes them more aggressive and more gregarious, and they all start glomming together. They form these huge, huge flocks, sometimes millions and millions of them, and they fly and they just wipe out every green thing in sight. What is that P-initial chemical that is like a hormone that they produce, that they exude, that causes all of them to get so gregarious? Um, what are you guys thinking? Has to begin with the letter P, like a hormone. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking pheromone. What do you guys think? You nailed it. 25 points. Boy, Joma, she, uh, she knows all this. It is indeed a pheromone. Nicely done. All right, let's go to your body system questions, three of them before you get your first break. Body systems for five points. If you say something you wish you hadn't, you're said to have had a slip of the what? Tongue. Tongue, that's right, a slip of the tongue. Good, for 15 points. Rapidly rising prices for prescription drugs, like this one, taken by diabetics, has prompted the government to step in to try to lower the price. What is that chemical, that hormone, that people suffering from diabetes are paying a lot for? Insulin. Insulin is right, yep. 25 point question for you in body systems. Last one in this category. Sometimes there is a cocktail of drugs that is given to people that are suffering from COVID-19. They are antigen fighting cocktails because they have antigens in which are derived from people who have recovered from COVID, they contain what other kind of antis to fight it in someone who just got the disease? What do you guys think? What are you guys thinking? I'm thinking like antibodies, but what do you guys think? Antibodies. 
Tiffany says, and Iowa is shaking her head, it is indeed antibodies, and that means you get 25 points. Well done. That means Walker Mill with that great first round, you now have 145 points. Well done. It is now time before we ask any more science questions, a few personal ones of our three players here today to let you know a little bit about them before we ask them their last nine questions. The team from Hyattsville is back. Desmond, nice to have you with us today. Tell us about yourself. What grade are you in? Seventh. Seventh grade. Uh, who's the principal at Hyattsville and who's your coach? Uh, I just moved there, so I don't really yeah. know. Yeah, so uh, um, a lot of these people you've not met before, so that's quite all right. Tell me what you want to do someday, young man. Um, I want to be a software programming engineer and then um, start a dealership business wow. and a, a computer business. You got a plan. You got a plan. And yeah, there's a lot of money to be made in that, and hopefully it brings you a lot of enjoyment as well. So uh, I'm glad to hear that. All right. Uh, let's move on and talk to your teammates here. Paula, Paula, uh, it's nice to have you here. Why did you want to be part of the Science Bowl team? Because you didn't have to. Why did you want to do this? I thought it was, it was going to be fun, and it is, because I'm challenging myself into um, new, new things that I haven't learned before. And now that I know that I've learned them, maybe next year I can be in the Science Bowl. Would love that. We'd love that. And you're doing exactly the right thing. You got to challenge yourself in life, kind of go to something that you don't know everything about, see what you can learn, and then learn from the experience and come back again. What do you want to do someday, Paula? Surprisingly, I want to be a second grade teacher. Surprisingly. I'm so happy yeah. to hear that. Why? Because um, I, at first I wanted to be a math teacher. But then I uh, started to get curious about the other subjects. And I started to notice that all of them are very fun for me. And well, I kind of want to show that the other kids that learning is fun and that learning is not just a piece of paper with a bunch of questions on it. It can be more than that. It certainly can. And you're demonstrating that today. And hopefully you'll take this experience and use it when you get to be a teacher. You're going to be a good one. I can tell. Nice to have you here today. And Haley, nice to have you with us today. Haley, tell us a little about yourself. Uh, why did you want to do this today? I wanted to do this today, like same answer as um, Paula, um, because um, it would be a good experience. Absolutely. Now we see some musical notes on the wall in back of you there. Are you a musician? Do you play an instrument or do you sing in a chorus of some kind? Yes, I play an instrument. What do you play? A flute. A flute. Yeah, Hyattsville is a performing arts school, so uh, you are in the right place there. What do you want to do someday, Haley? I want to be a vet veterinarian. Oh, wow. Do you have any pets at home now? Yes. What do you have? Two cats, two bunnies. Oh, my goodness. So they're in good hands. So you have a little office, a vet office right there. You've got to worry about their health and uh, feeding them and all of that. Uh, that sounds like uh, you're getting good practice right now. Thanks, Haley. If you guys are ready, here are your last nine questions and give it your all. Uh, we start with the let's get physical five point question. All right. This is involving numbers. Let's see if you can count with using chemical formulae. Astronomers now think that there is life, there is life on Venus. Yeah, in the clouds up above it, even though it is hellishly hot down below, it is very hot up there, but they think there are some chemicals up there that had to have been produced by living things, a chemical called phosphine. Phosphine has the formula PH3. I will give you the points here if you can tell me what P and H stand for, and how many atoms of each there are in the molecule PH3. So first of all, decide what the P stands for and the H stands for. What chemicals? And then how many atoms of each? Because if you know like H2O is water, if you know H2O2 is hydrogen peroxide, 
The H and the O stand for hydrogen and oxygen. What do the P and the H stand for? I just gave you one. Okay. Um, H definitely probably stands for water. Uh, guys, what do you think for P? Not physical, no. Um, the clue was in what I told you the, the name of the, the substance was phosphine. Phosphine, it's P stands for phosphorus and H stands for hydrogen. How many hydrogens? Three, PH3. And if there's no number next to the letter, it means there's one. One P, three H's. Try this next one. Uh, some of you may not know, but recently Starbucks had to stop serving a strawberry flavored drink because it came to attention that the red coloring that they used was made from ground up bugs. It happens everywhere. It's called carminic acid. There are insects that are ground up. They're perfectly edible. And it turns out that carminic acid is uh, very pH sensitive because it mixes. It causes a red or an orange color uh, because of that acid. So if you are making maraschino cherries or if you're eating them, they're red. They're very sweet. You would mix the ground up bugs with which of the following to make sure that it is acidic enough to use. Would you mix the bugs with ammonia, lime juice, or baking soda? So you have to ask yourself, which of those substances is acidic? Is it ammonia, lime juice, or baking soda? Saying lime juice. Yeah, lime juice. It is lime juice. Absolutely right. It is citric acid. Good answer. Got yourself 15 points. All right, for 25 points, and let's get physical. Because LED lamps, LED is light emitting diode. Everybody uses LED lamps now. They don't cause any heat. Because LED lamps emit light in a very, very narrow band of wavelengths, they're more energy efficient than the other lights that we have been using for years. There are two other kinds of lights that we've been using for years. I'll give you 25 points if you can name one of them. The LED lights have replaced what other lights? Like the ones you screw into your lamps, the kind that oftentimes you see in the ceiling of your classroom. Light bulbs. Light bulbs. What do we call them? Light bulbs. They are light bulbs, but they have a certain kind of name. Uh, Paula's looking around. She's looking at the lights in her room. She's trying to get some hints. She's a good student there. See, she's observing. The light bulbs you guys are telling me about are called incandescent bulbs, incandescent. And the ones in your ceiling are fluorescent, fluorescent. All right, let's move on to potpourri. Five points. If you get a tattoo, you better like it. It's yours for life. Unless you get a laser treatment to burn it out, the body can't get rid of tattoos because the particles that were injected, the ink that went in, is too large for what body system to flush away. What body system can't attack those ink blobs? Name of a body system. Because, go ahead. Hmm. Guys, what do you think? I think it's the arm. Okay, it's a body. Let's say, let's say you get a splinter and you can't uh -huh. get it out and it starts to get infected. Mm -hmm. What body system comes to make sure you don't lose that finger and fights that infection? Antibodies and your um. And that's part of what system. system? You're on the right track there, Desmond. Immune system. Immune system. Good. I knew you could do it. Could do it. Thank you, young man. Potpourri for 15 points. Multiple choice. Where would you find little creatures known as thermophiles? Thermo, T-H-E-R-M-O, thermophiles, P-H-I-L-E-S. Would you find them in Yellowstone National Park's geyser pools? Would you find them in the droppings of cave-dwelling bats? Or would they, would they be on the slopes of Mount Kilimanjaro? Thermophiles. Think what the word sounds like, and that'll help you determine if you would find them 
in the hot springs at Yellowstone National Park, in the bat droppings of cave-dwelling bats, or inside of the, uh, or on the slopes of Mount Kilimanjaro. Okay, guys, I am totally thinking of the back of amusement park because why would they like kill off any bugs or animals there? Like, so what, and... are, you choosing? what are you choosing there, Desmond? Mm -hmm. Haley, you want to say something? What do you think? Like Yellowstone hotness, Park? Yeah. Like, like hotness or hotness. Okay. All right. So which of those places would be a place of hotness? Can you say the um, name of places again? Sure. Yellowstone National Park geyser pools, uh -huh. slopes of Mount Kilimanjaro, or in a cave found in the droppings of bats. I'm go I'm go I'm about to go with the first Taylor, one. Haley, you came up with uh, with a good clue there. So what's the answer? Um, Yellowstone, I think. Yellowstone is correct, yeah. yes. Because what do they have at Yellowstone? What's that famous geyser that erupts there? Old Faithful. Old Faithful. So you've got a lot of hot water out there. Okay, you got the points. All right, for 25 points in potpourri. When kids, and we've all done it, we, when we get our dinner, we don't want the mashed potatoes to touch the gravy. We don't want the peas to mix with the meat. We want everything to be separate. Sometimes we put our hand over the top so any fly doesn't land on our food. Some people, they do that so much they get OCD. They're OCD. The D stands for a disorder. Can you tell me for 25 points what O and C stand for? Because people keep doing these things all the time. They can't stop themselves. OCD. You might have heard that about people. Big words. Obsessive compulsive. Obsessive compulsive is the right answer. Let's go to Dateline. Dateline for five points. All right, let's check this out here. And I think we have, we do indeed, we have a visual for this. A visual for Dateline for five points. We'll bring up a picture for you guys to examine here. This poor little dog, his name was Laika. Her name was Laika, L-A-I-K-A. -A, was a stray, a mutt. On the, street, on the streets of Moscow, Russia, back in 1957. And the Soviet space program put Laika inside of a space capsule and shot that dog into space, and it orbited the Earth four times before the poor dog passed away. The name of that spacecraft is famous. It was the second one. The first one got the whole world's attention. It began with the letter S. What was the name of that spacecraft that the Soviet Union sent into space first time an animal orbited the Earth? Guys, oh, Sputnik. Sputnik. S-P-U-T-N-I-K. Let's try the next one for 15 points. You'll get this one. The former president of the country of Singapore, which is a tropical country, it's very hot there, Southeast Asia, said the greatest invention of, invention of all time is this, which was developed by Willis Carrier in 1902 to make New York City print shops more bearable in the summer. What invention would make a hot print shop more bearable in the summer? Mm. Uh, air conditioning? Air conditioning, exactly right, exactly right. All right, and let's see, the last question for you in this round, dateline for 25 points, is a multiple choice question. You know, you saw those forest fires out in Oregon and California, and they're still burning in some places. It's horrible. There's so much smoke that people can't leave their homes. Even they can't even take their dogs out. Even with the air conditioning running, there's so much smoke, and the smoke contains something called PM. P.M. What is that P.M.? You can't see it, but it's there. Does it stand for pollution matter, particulate matter, or poisonous matter? P.M. 
invisible things in the smoke that make it impossible to go outside because it damages lungs, it is hard to breathe. They rate it like two uh, or three or four. So particulate, pollution, or poisonous matter. Guys, I'm thinking of... This is the last um, question in the game. Pollution. Let's give it your all. Help Desmond out here. Pick one. Defend it. I, I'm, I'm not to say pollution matter. What do you guys think? I think um, it's it... either the first one or, this, or the last one. So we have pollution matter, particulate matter, or poisonous matter. We haven't mm -hmm. heard from you, Paula. Is it, you said that it was PM, right? PM, yes. The yeah. M stands for matter. What does the P stand for? It got to be pollution, because think about it. Pollution um, like has these dangerous chemicals that um, harms the lungs. Yes, and, but when it comes to the smoke. They all seem to be thinking that way. And it, it is a form of pollution, but the things I said you can't see them, so the correct answer is particulate matter. Particulate matter is what the answer there was. Good try, though. Good try. And you did better in this second round, so you end today's Science Bowl with 150 points. Congratulate yourselves, Hyattsville. It is now time for Walker Mill to answer their last nine questions. But first, let's find out a little bit more about our players, just as we did with the Hyattsville team. Let's start with our captain, Ijoma. And Ijoma, nice to have you here today. Tell us a little bit about uh, your school. Uh, you know, a lot of you have never met the principals at your schools because you have not been there. Do you know your principal's name, and then can you tell us who your coach is? Um, our principal's name is Ms. Cribs, and our coach is Ms. Barrientos. Wonderful, and both uh, wonderful people, just like Ms. Barrientos over there at uh, the Hyattsville, or uh, Ms. Davis over there at the Hyattsville team. Tell me why you wanted to do this today, Ijoma, because you didn't have to. Well, last year I was in the team, and so now I'm automatically captain since I'm the only one. <laughs> and your experience shows you have a great, great poise, great personality, great smile. You're into it. How do you know so much science? Because you do. Um, you do. Well, <laughs> I'm really interested in like animals and bugs, so I watch a lot of videos on YouTube about that. So that's how I know so much. Great. What do you want to do someday? Um. Well. I'm thinking of being like a veterinarian, but something that has to do with nature and stuff. Well, it sounds like your, in, your interest will one day be your life's work, and that's always a nice thing when that happens. Let's talk to your teammates here. And where is Tiffany? Tiffany, nice to have you with us today as well. And uh, tell us the Tiffany story. What do you want to do someday yourself? Well, I plan on being a pediatrician. Pediatrician. Why so? Well, I kind of uh, love hanging out with children, and I realized how little doctors are in the world, so I decided to try medicine out. Yeah. Do you have uh, younger brothers and sisters at home? No, I have an older brother. Older brother. All right. Uh, why did you want to do this? Why did you want to be on this team? Because you didn't have a lot of time to prepare for this. Well, I wanted to join the Science Bowl since I have a really big interest in science, and it really will help me get to where I want to be. So. It's best to learn about all of it. Absolutely right. Wonderful. Good to have you here. And Ayo, nice to have you with us today as well. Have you been with us before, or Ayo, is this your first time on our program? No, I haven't, but I think my brother did it. Oh, your brother did it. Did he, yeah. did he win when he was here? Do you remember? Did he tell you? No, he didn't even tell me he did until recently. Wow. All right. Because uh, like I was saying earlier in the show, Walker Mill was the county champ. Uh, just a few years ago, and in our 35-year history, Walker Mill has been, has repeated as county champion, so there's a lot of talent over there, as you're demonstrating. Uh, tell me what you want to do someday. In the future, I also want to be a veterinarian. Yeah, and do you have any pets at home? Yeah, I have a dog. What kind of dog do you have? It's a Chihuahua pug mix. Oh, what's the dog's name? Her name's Noel. Ah, and I bet she's been... Uh, Wonderful to have around during the pandemic, you know, a nice little companion, you know, when you don't have your schoolmates around. All right, good luck here in this second half of the program. All right, you guys ready? You did so well the first time. Keep it up. Keep up that momentum. Here we go. Let's get physical for five points. A very successful cloud data software maker. 
a company worth $70 billion, $70 billion, is named after one of these hexagonal bits of frozen precipitation. The name of the company is this, a kind of frozen precipitation that is shaped like a hexagon. Um, I'm thinking like snowflakes or something. You got that right. Snowflakes have six sides. They are indeed hexagonal. The name of the company is Snowflake. That's a company you guys want to work for someday. It's worth 70 billion bucks. 15 points under Let's Get Physical. In the Coyote and Roadrunner cartoons, some of you may have seen those or heard about them, the laws of this branch of science never seem to apply. Physics. Physics, that's right. Because they run off cliffs and they just hang there and they look down and they go, uh-oh, and then they fall. So yeah, physics is uh, not a strong suit for 25 points. While the Fujita scale measures the strength of tornadoes, and the Richter scale, the strength of earthquakes. The Saffir Simpson scale measures the ferocity of these weather events. Um, I'm thinking hurricane. What do you guys think? Hurricanes. Hurricanes, yeah. In fact, it's been such an awful season, we had to get into the Greek alphabet as we're taping this show, Hurricane Zeta which is the fifth letter of the Greek alphabet, is now poised to move up onto the Gulf Coast. All right, potpourri for five points. It's a visual. If you'd look at this picture, please. Uh, this flower is called the trailing arbutus, A-R-B-U-T-U-S. I don't expect you to know that or how to spell it. It is the official state flower of the state of Massachusetts. It is also known by what same name as the ship that brought the pilgrims to America from England. The Mayflower? Yeah, it's also <laughs> called the Mayflower. Never knew that. I, you know, I learned something too when I write these questions. For 15 points in Popery. Thank you, Ijoma. Nicely done. While one of Santa's reindeer has the same name as a female fox, a vixen, another is named for one of these heavenly bodies like Hale Bop and Haley's. Um, what are you guys thinking? Can you repeat the question? Come on, Tiffany and Io. Ijoma's doing all the heavy lifting here. You know, <laughs> Santa's reindeers. Count them off on your fingers. Come Dasher, Blixen. What's the one that's named for a heavenly body, uh, one that is known as Hale Bop or Haley's? I'm thinking. Saturn, but I don't know if that's a reindeer. Not, not Saturn, not Saturn. Good try. Comet. Tiffany says Comet. Ayo, what do you think? I think it might be Comet. It is Comet, indeed. All right. You came and you helped your captain out there. You got your points. You got your 15. Multiple choice for 25 in potpourri. When scientists conduct experiments in vitro, I-N-V-I-T-R-O, when they conduct experimental tests in vitro, they're literally doing so in water, inside a living organism, or in glass, in vitro. Are they doing these experiments in water, inside a living organism, or in glass? Um, what, I'm thinking glass too. What do you think, I tell me? Um, can you repeat the question, my connection? When, ex when scientists conduct experimental tests in vitro, I-N, and then V-I-T-R-O, does that mean they're doing the experiment inside a living organism, in water, or in glass? I think it might be glass, too. It is glass, absolutely right, yes. Uh, it is a, a prefix that means glass. You guys did it very nicely there. You got yourself 25 more points. You're on a roll. Three more questions, stay with me. Here we are, dateline for five points. You all know about the Nobel Awards, Nobel Prizes, giving the top science awards in the world. There are also prizes known as the Ig Nobel Awards. They're kind of silly awards that are giving out, given out, but they have fun with them, but sometimes there's some serious research done. But the Ig Nobel Award in entomology this year went to a study that showed that most entomologists are afraid of these. Even though with two extra legs, these creatures aren't really insects. 
Entomologists, it turns out, entomologists are afraid of these. Even though with two uh, extra legs, they're not really insects. I'm thinking spiders. What do you yeah, think? That's right. Those guys that specialize in insects, they're afraid of spiders, just like everybody else. Good answer. Five points. For 15 points, Airbus, a large airplane maker in Europe, is designing a zero carbon jet plane that will run entirely on this gas, the first element in the periodic table. What do you guys think? You I'm know, thinking... we ask questions about the periodic table. First element in the periodic table, it's the gas. I'm thinking oxygen or hydrogen. Which one do you guys think? Tiffany, you. Weigh I, in. I think hydrogen. Io. Unmute yourself, please. Yeah, I said hydrogen. Hydrogen it is. Absolutely right. Good answer. Next, last question of the game for you. Multiple choice. After being shot by a would-be assassin, President James Garfield died months later from infection. It was terrible. Doctors treating him did not use the sterile antiseptic techniques that were being used at the time by which of the following men? Jonas Salk, Albert Schweitzer, or Joseph Lister? Which of those three men? Jonas Salk, Albert Schweitzer, or Joseph Lister was the one who said you needed to use sterile techniques to keep from infecting wounds. Had they done that, they could have saved President Garfield's life. Salk, Schweitzer, or Lister? I'm thinking Lister, but what do you guys think? I was thinking Lister too. Yeah, I was looking at Lister. It is Joseph Lister, because some of you may have seen in the store Listerine. Listerine is that mouthwash, and that comes exactly from Joseph Lister. Nicely done. That means with that wonderful answer there, Joseph Lister, you end the game, Walker Mill, with 280 points. Pat yourselves on the back. We hope you enjoyed today's game as much as we did bringing it to you. We had six outstanding young people here with some alternates behind them, and we're proud of each and every one of our players. Our final tally today is Hyattsville 150 points, Walker Mill 280. Congratulations to Walker Mill and to Hyattsville for all their good work. Everybody give yourselves and each other a round of applause, please. In addition to our players here, we have Mr. Martin over there, the assistant principal from Walker Mill. We have Alejandra Williams, who is an alternate there from Hyattsville, I believe. Yes. And we also have Hannah Washington here, also an alternate. Miss Barrientos waved everybody. Miss Barrientos, the wonderful coach of the Walker Mill team, came on at the last minute. And also a last minute addition, they had to organize quickly was Miss Davis, Javon Dev. Miss Davis has been with the team for many, many years, and we appreciate all of them. We appreciate you for taking time during this pandemic to watch these outstanding students here from Prince George's Schools. I'm Dave Zarin. I hope to see you next time on another edition of the Science Bowl. Bye-bye.